So let's listen to it before and after. First, the rough mix of the artist. Hey guys, welcome to the studio. Today's episode will be a little bit different because I didn't have any time today. Like on short notice, two guys wanted me to record their vocals. So we're sitting here for the entire day because unfortunately no one else of the team was here today. I had to take care of it. Rap isn't really my thing, but it was still fun to help someone to record their vocals here in the vocal booth. Now I just have this little challenge ahead of me. As you know, the last time I did the track submit edition where you guys sent me tracks and I give you feedback, I announced that the next time I will actually pick one song, get all of the stems and take care of mixing it. The entire song here in the A studio, the only problem is I have only 40 minutes left until I have to leave again to my next appointment. So <laughs> let's try it. It's a mixing challenge. So we got here a song by Claire Legato. It's called Mananazlu. I think that's how it's pronounced. It's maybe maybe a mountain. I don't really know, but it's actually a good song. It's not like horribly mixed. It's like a good starting point. So let's listen first to his mixed version. So actually not that bad, it's not really my type of music and I'm not a big fan of the, the main synthesizer sounds, they're a little too high and too playful, it's not really mine, but this is not what this is about, it's about mixing it. So let's actually open up Logic, that's really nice of him, there's already a rough mix included, his rough mix, let me get rid of the, the waveform increasement thing. And he only bounced out a section of the song, which is actually enough for, for this kind of video. We don't need to mix the entire song. Um, let's maybe mute the guidance track and just listen to this. Yeah, that's not sounding good. Way too loud and all just too much for the master channel. Drag it down by maybe 5, 6 dBs or even more. First up, trying to figure out the BPM. Where is it? Metering, BPM counter. 120, that's nice. Starting point is not aligned, unfortunately. Let's get that right so I can actually loop it up. Just making sure this is really on beat. I mean, just so that you can actually loop things up. And also if you add any kind of effect that it's also on the grid, for example, a delay, you want to make sure that it's tight and nice. Saving it, of course. And now let's... Okay, and I usually start with the most important part in electronic music, definitely the drop. So we got here the drop part starting at um, bar number 17. And first up, I need to get some order in there because otherwise I'm totally confused. It's not my song. I don't know where what is. So I usually like to have the kick first because it's the most important and then dragging all of the other drum bits underneath of it. Guitar bass, another clap, another clap. 
facts a hat facts lead a loop what is this oh he bounced out his main channel we don't need that delete everything you don't need right away so we should have here all of the drums yeah this sounds all right so putting all of the drum bits already into one bus i always use my bus number two for all of the drums it goes into the glue that is doing parallel compression it's preset in my auto load that's why i can produce a little bit faster and then i actually but that's a personal thing i like to mix already into a compressor the ssl compressor but it's doing just a tiny bit Really just 2 dB of gain reduction and put it onto zero, actually not to make it too loud. And I also already engage the limiter. It's a personal thing. Some people might say, tell you that it's bad, stupid. I like actually to do it for electronic dance music because you limit it a lot. You make it really loud and the limiter really changes the sound of your song. The kick might really hard push against the limiter and be quieter this way. So I need to have some sort of limiting already on it but i'm not pushing it really hard just a little checking and span how loud it is i can actually push it a bit that's fine so what can we do to the to the elements i'm muting everything else i just first want to get the drums right so let's listen to the kick solo if it needs any processing actually quite good at sitting in the right frequency spot sounding clean and yeah there's no need to change it usually the first thing I do with tracks by other people that I mix is like replacing the kick and not even telling them because it makes such a huge difference but here I will go with the kick that is provided with the song at least for now might still change it maybe later the next one is actually just like the the reverb tail of the clap I don't need that deleted that's the actual clap Safety, EQ, get rid of the low end. And now just checking which frequencies might sound nice or terrible. Boosting the good ones, getting rid of the bad ones. Yeah, a little bit there, but not too much. The hat. I would actually love to spread the hat to make more room for all of the other elements. I'm using the delay, just a simple sample delay, just pushing one side. Makes it extremely wide. Reverb is also preset reverb 4. It's a small reverb, I'll have a vintage reverb, just with like 0 0.5 seconds of um, decay time and just a tiny bit. Safety low cut. The clap 100% needs a reverb. I also got one here set up, clap reverb, also Valhalla Vintage Verb with 0 0.7. Okay, the loop is actually not playing in this kind of segment, so I can delete that. Snare is also empty. Let's check if there are any more. So those are the drums for now. Let's add the bass and see how it works with the kick. It's clicking a little here and there. We can't change that, unfortunately. Let's EQ it really quick. Also here, low cut for safety. Listening to it with the kick. This is too thin. That's too much. So I think right around 45 hertz. Adding 
side chaining with the LFO tool. Now we can increase the volume of the bass a bit. Not sure about the top end of the bass, might cut it away. But this really depends on the other elements, maybe something for later. So what I really love to do, that's maybe like a, a sneaky trick, um, checking in the analyzer, kick and bass. You can see both spikes in there. The lower one is usually the kick, the higher one the bass. And make sure that the bass is like sticking out a little bit over the, the kick. That's kind of like a sweet spot, especially if you don't have a treated room, don't have big speakers, you're not that experienced, this might actually help. So you can see they're separated. You can see both of them individually and they're not like getting in the way of each other and the bass is a little bit louder than the kick. So that's really fine. What else do we got here? I usually also color my stuff. The bass is always orange and everything above the bass is drums and everything below it are usually like the chords and, and like main melodies, the musical elements and at the bottom usually effects, pads, and these kind of things that I usually do later on in a song. This helps me. I can open up any of my old songs and immediately know where the bass is at and where the drums are at. That's also, again, something we don't need. It's like everything, probably a group that we got here, Lee. Yeah, that's the one I actually don't like but it's mixing and not changing and remixing the song. Let's start maybe with the piano. Nice chords. So for the piano again, safety low cut. Boosting a little bit like around 2K and, and the top end just to give it more presence. But the 2K one I might have to change later on, depending on what other elements are in that song. For example, if there are vocals on the drop, the 2K won't make any sense. Reverb. I love reverb. It's maybe a little too much, but I just love it, especially on pianos. Because you can't really distinguish the, pia the the reverb actually from the sustain, so you can push it a little bit more than actually on vocals, for example. <laughs> reverb bus, we don't need that. The plug, is the plug even playing? Ah, oh, okay. Shot plug. It's actually interesting, I don't know what it is. That's cool. Sounds like an advertisement jingle. And this one sounds like old school Game Boy music. Love it. But for example, this sound is a good example for why I'm low cutting everything. This one doesn't need the low end. You can hear it. There is like low end up to 20 hertz. There's no reason for that. Get rid of it. I'm even cutting quite hard into the sound because we have to kick around 50 hertz, around 100 hertz, the bass, so we don't want to mask those two. They're too important for the drop. So cutting into it and listening to it with everything else on while doing the EQing, very important. So back to the bass, it's exactly what I thought about. Like there's too much above the bass, so we don't need like this, this, this ravey electro kind of top end of the bass. It's really just masking the two other elements. The 
it's already a lot cleaner. I wish I could go into the synthesizer of the bass and tweak it even more, but that's what we got. I think this works definitely better than with the full bass on. Let's check again, A and B compare it. I think this is a nice sweet spot. The bass really doesn't need it in this example. If you just have the bass and the kick, then definitely open up the bass and make it fuzzy and electro and dirty. But for this song, no. You know what? I will actually change the kick. I, I don't know. It's it's not it's not punchy enough for me. I don't know. I will just change it. This will make everything so much easier, as I already explained in another video. The kick is crucial. So let's put a kick in here. Four to the floor, of course. Go into my special John Sign sample folder. I added a new kick a couple of days ago that I'm not sharing. It's too good. It's a little too loud, but... If you compare it to the original kick, It's a little nicer in there, in my opinion, but I will definitely keep the original kick maybe to um, just have the top end of the original kick in there to make it sound more like the, the original intended version of the song. I just think that my kick is too low. Let's pitch it up by one semitone. even by two. And then mix in the original kicks top end because I actually like that. Getting rid of the top end of my kick. This works. Let's see what else we got in there. Pat. Also here, first listening to it solo. Again, way too much. Unnecessary low end. It might sound thin to you in solo, but it needs to. It's like about the mix, not the individual sound. And I will actually give the pad a chorus. I have like a special chorus on bus number 14. It's like mega wide and I like to turn it up all the way and then just lower the volume of the sound. I will actually add to the stab also a side chain. LFO tool. Make 
making the clap a little louder and the hat. There's a whistle in there. I didn't expect that. I will leave it out for now because it's very resonating. Um, getting that in check might actually take quite a while. Let's get to the lead. It has like, yeah, it's it's very dreamy and there is not really a lot of attack, so I actually don't like it, but um, let's try to make the most out of it. Again, safety low cut. Maybe I can make it snap here by using by native instruments. Where is it? The transient master, this could help, could also ruin it. Not really. I don't know. I will leave it on at like 50%. For now, everything sounds kind of okay, heading into the right direction. I've muted the bass because whenever I, I, I unmute the bass and let it play with everything else, it kind of sounds worse. It's usually a sign for too much low end. Really quick comparing it to the rough original mix, just not to lose completely track, because sometimes producers intend certain things to stick out or be loud. I think we're already a lot tighter and cleaner. There's more space in the mix, but there are still some elements missing. Actually, the whistle has to go in there. It's like such a crucial part of it. So I've been mixing in also the effects. There are a little small kind of effects in the song. I just acute them and put reverb on them. On this one that I'm now actually showing you not. Um, but for example, this one right here, low cut, chorus, reverb. And I think we got like to maybe 60% of the mixing. You could do fancier stuff now, more like parallel compression, use compressors that have like a vintage character to them, do more EQing, um, more cutting, editing, and that kind of stuff. But I think for this kind of song idea, the mixing like this is already enough. I would actually go to make this song better, go back to actually changing the synthesizer sound, tweaking them a little bit more there. So let's listen to it before and after, first the rough mix of the artist. I think it's cleaned up a little. Again, if you want to get more out of it, it makes sense to go back to the original sounds actually. And I think you've seen that it's a pretty simple mixing. It's basically all just EQs, chorus here and there, reverb on everything new, 
and then just getting the levels right and that's pretty much it there's nothing fancy on on my no lfo tool transient designer and that's it so just mixing with the queuing levels reverb that's it and of course then the master to get it up to loudness but i think with the simple tools you can achieve already a lot so yeah i hope you learned something or maybe you didn't i don't know <laughs> let me know in the comments if you're interested to get your song mixed just send it over there's a link in the description for for these kind of submissions you can also just um, upload your Logic project and send it in this way if you're using Logic. If you're not using Logic, I need the, the stems same as here. Just like maybe the, the drop and the, the break before, that's really enough. Please label them and make sure to bounce them out so I can just drag them in and they're already aligned. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see us tomorrow back again. Maybe in the studio, maybe not. I actually don't really know. <laughs>